Today, we're going to be testing our skills with the Ultimate Automation Mod Pack. Mechanical Mastery considers itself to be an expert level mod pack, so our knowledge is going to be pushed past its limit and we may even find its breaking point. However, this is going to be a lot different to other series as we've done. We're going to be completing this entire mod pack in just one episode. Can we do it? Can we prove our automation prowess and defeat this pack maker? Do we have the fortitude to deal with late game mechanism without losing our grip on reality? With 5 tiers of mechanical crystals to acquire, can we do it? Let's find out. Oh, and one more teeny tiny little detail I've not told you yet. It's a skyblock. Hello. So like every great adventure, we're gonna start by punching a tree. Underneath this one there is a secret chest containing all of our skyblock goodies. Now, something special about this mod pack is that we actually start off with Project E, which sounds kind of broken until you realize that 99% of items have had their EMC value removed. Instead, we're going to be able to buy raw materials, process them into crystals, and then sell back the end product for mad stonks. And a quick tip here, every time you're given an item by the quest book, make sure you teach that item to your transmutation table, that way you can print more of them. Another wonderful thing is that dirt has got an EMC value, so in theory we now have unlimited dirt for base expansion. So let's expand. And now that we've got a bigger island, we can plant down some saplings, do a little bit of twerking to boost their growth, and ultimine for a bunch of logs. Oak logs have got a pretty decent EMC value for early game, so this is how we're going to be farming EMC at least until we start producing our own crystals. So let's make ourselves a crafting table, combine it with a stick, and now we have a crafting table on a stick. Genius! Now our very first quest is actually kind of ridiculous. You see, we need to make a full cobblestone generator. However, since cobblestone has got an EMZ value of 1, we can literally break 1 cobblestone and then print an infinite amount. So thanks to the quest book, we are now armed with some raw iron, gold and redstone. If we make ourselves an iron pickaxe, we can get ourselves some redstone dust. That way we can make ourselves two sterling dynamos. For now, we're just going to power these with oak logs. And if my calculations are correct, which they're probably not, we can now smelt down four tin, four iron, eight copper and one gold. And we should have enough ingots to make ourselves a machine frame, which we can turn into our very first pulverizer. This is a huge step forward, because now we have a chance of getting more resources from our raw ores. We're also going to get some gravel as a byproduct, which when turned into flint will increase our chances of boosting even more. Now we're going to need some more island space, so crafting up an iron wand will allow us to place down multiple dirt at once, which is going to be a huge time saver. And since the pulverizer is painfully slow, our free time can now be spent farming logs for EMC. Then taking a look at the quest book, it's time to make our very first of many mechanical essence. A tier 1 crystal is going to sell for 8,000 EMC, however it's only going to cost us around 2,500 EMC to produce it. But to get the most bang for our buck, we're going to need to make ourselves a multi-servo press. That way we can make our plates, rods and gears a lot cheaper. So after farming up some wood and making a gear and rod die, we can now make ourselves 10 tier 1 crystals. We're going to need 40 raw iron, 40 raw bauxite and 10 raw copper. We can send those to our pulverizer and while we wait, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and make a start on some basic create. After making some high covalence dust, we can combine it with cobblestone to get ourselves some andesite and make our first andesite alloy. That means we can make ourselves some shafts, a large cog wheel and a water wheel for power. We can also strip some logs then to make our first andesite casing. We're doing all of this so we can get ourselves a millstone. So let's set that up next. Now this has got two benefits to us right now, we can get instant flint from our gravel, but we can also grind down stacks of cobblestone into gravel for even more flint. And since we've got some spare stress units, we can set up an encased fan with some lava, and we've got ourselves some bulk fueler smelting. We can now turn our 40 iron and aluminum into gears, and we can turn our copper into rods. And if we combine all those together, we'll get our 10 mechanical essence. 
which we can then throw into our multi servo press and we'll get 10 mechanical crystals. We can sell those back for 81,000 EMC and as a quest rewards we get a bonus 16 crystals which is a lot of profit for us. What's even better is we now have access to tier 2 resources, so let's claim all of our new goodies and teach the system how to print them. And if we grab out the andesite alloy and the andesite we made earlier, we can get some free create goodies as well. Nice! So let's ramp up our progression now, let's wash some soul sand into quartz, do a little bit of micro crafting and make ourselves a sequential fabricator. This will allow us to auto craft which is a massive step forward towards automating tier 1 crystals. But in order to use multiple machines we're going to need a way to transfer energy. So let's make up some dielectric paste and craft them into energy cables. I think we're finally at the point where we can start to automate our EMC production. So let's craft up an EMC link, some pretty item pipes, we can get jump scared by the chapter completion and claim some quest rewards. The last step we need to do is a ton of micro crafting of machines. So let me speed through that boringness and I'll be right back. We're going to set one EMC link to raw copper, we're going to extract it into a pulverizer with auto input enabled and that's going to go into a redstone furnace. Of course we're going to need to hook everything up to power and our copper ingots need to go into a multi servo press with a rod die. And to deal with the dust that we get from pulverizing, we're going to use a storage drawer filter to gold dust and we're going to hope and pray that our gold dust goes into that drawer first. Now we just need to duplicate this setup for our iron and aluminum gears. Oh boy did we need a lot of power. <laughs> So we've got 5 sterling dynamos and I'm still doing it manually right now but very soon we're going to need to automate coal going into them. So all of our items need to end up in our fabricator and we can teach the fabricator how to make the tier 1 essence. That then needs to go into a multi servo press to get squished and our crystal can get sent into an EMC link. However that setup didn't work but first I think I'm going to hook everything up with pretty pipes and some low extraction modules. Then if we set the top of our fabricator to input we should hopefully see some items get sent over. Nice! And after a little bit of tinkering, we are now exporting our crystals into our link. Dang, we have already automated tier 1. This so-called expert pack is going to be easy for sure. I love it. Though our fabricator was filling up with rods, so to combat this we're going to be using a stack limiter in the pipe above it. We are desperately going to need to automate the filling of our sterling dynamos and I think, I think we're probably going to use create. And we end up with a monstrosity that looks a little bit like this. Yikes. It's quite inefficient right now as we are using EMC to buy logs when a tree farm would be so much better. But the logs then go into a smelting system where they draw logs to charcoal and then that's fed into our dynamos. We also have a system that will buy cobblestone, millstone it twice, put the flint into a drawer and that gets extracted into our pulverizers. But thinking about our power problems, it looks like the lapidary dynamo can turn essence into RF, so let's try and convert it over, kind of like this. I'm pretty sure that this is a mistake, since the dynamos still have a limited output of RF per tick. The benefit is that we are no longer buying logs, which were extremely expensive. And I also crafted up some hardened components to try and speed up our gears. So with tier 1 looking horrible, but finally fully automated, let's turn our attention to tier 2. We're going to need some tier 1 essence, a steel gear, an invar gear and two bronze rods. This seems to be the alloy tier. I kind of got to get some micro crafting done as we are going to need a lot of thermal machines. But first we should probably tackle some basics and make ourselves a blast furnace so we can get ourselves some steel. We can then use that steel to make ourselves a pyrolyzer and if we throw in some coal we'll get some coal coke which when inducted with iron ingots will give us a much faster and much more automatable steel source. But as always we are going to need a way to deal with creosote oil. So to keep it simple we are going to use a nullifier and a mechanical pump to destroy it. Simples. I made some friends. Cuteness overload. But with the distractions aside, let's now semi-automate tier 2 essence. Let's go! Invar gears complete. Steel gears complete. Bronze rods complete. Then if we throw in some tier 1 essence, our mixer will power up and we are now getting tier 2 essence. Nice! Quick tip number 2, micro crafting is slow. 
so make yourself a personal machine wall to process your resources much faster. Annoyingly, it seems that the quest didn't recognize me getting the pyrolyzer. That's because it forces us to make a coke oven first. So the coke bricks acquired a piece of steel and yes, finally all of the quests completed. And you know what that means? We have unlocked tier 3 essence and all of the nice new resources to go along with it. Yay! And it looks like in order to unlock refined storage and all of its greatness, we're going to need to make ourselves some kind of effigies. But since we can now make pipes from the pipes mod, I'm actually going to redo our tier 1 and tier 2 systems, trying to make it a little bit more efficient. Wish me luck. This is what I came up with for tier 1. It's almost perfect and it's actually a whopping 4 times quicker than the previous system. That's because we are now producing 4 times the amount of ingots for gears than we are for rods, making it a lot quicker. And we are now producing enough essence to warrant the use of 2 multi-servo presses. Now, don't hate me because it's ugly, but now we are importing the flint for our pulverizers for that chance of a little bit of a boost. But do not worry, you guys saw the intro. We will be making things look pretty and much more efficient once we unlock some more tech. Then for our power, we have got a basic coal pulverizer system making all of our coal for our sterling dynamos. Expensive, but we are producing so much EMC now it's kind of okay. So that's tier 1 done, let me quickly get tier 2 up and running. I love the sound of water on lava, it's so satisfying. Distractions aside, we've now automated tier 2 and we're making one essence every 5 seconds. And again, we are going to be storing some of the essence for tier 3 and then we're going to sell the rest. It's only logical. But before we make a start on tier 3, I want to take a step back towards create and we are going to need some mechanical crafters. That way we can make ourselves some electric motors and do away with the unsightly water wheel systems that we're using at the moment. But oh my goodness, there is something incredibly game changing that I just discovered. Backpacks. Backpacks with crafting upgrades. Micro crafting was killing me. But now we can just store a large quantity of resource in our backpack and then craft from within it. I wish I'd known about this days ago. It is honestly going to change my life. So using our backpack, why don't we make up some rose quartz in the sawmill? Saw logs into sawdust, turn that into paper, make some sandpaper and polish our rose quartz. Let's induction smelt some copper and zinc together to make some brass ingots and then use those to make some brass casings. Let's make some electron tubes and finally a bunch of mechanical crafters. Then let's grab this noisy wandering trader and help him reevaluate his life choices. Good luck on your future endeavors. But then if we add this last ingredient into our crafter, we should slowly make our very first electric motor. Nice! And then just to repeat this several more times. So I've started adding some of our schematics from Hobble Create, though without some more automation it's actually kind of exhausting so that's on pause for now. Instead, we're going to focus on Tier 3 Essence, the great unlocker of digital storage. And for that, we're going to need to automate effigies. Let's go! So we're now making the dormant effigies, and it seems like turning stone into calcite is going to be our bottleneck. So we can take our dormant effigy, send it into a fluid encapsulator with lava, and we will get the blaze effigy. So we'll start with a magma crucible to make our lava, and we'll be melting down netherrack because it's much quicker than cobblestone. That'll output into our fluid encapsulator, and as you can see, we are dividing our dormant effigies into four different drawers because we want equal distribution for all four effigies. So let's plug one of those drawers into our encapsulator, and now we have our blaze effigies. We're going to send those into a buffer drawer and then into a sawmill for processing into blaze rods, which can also go into a buffer drawer and eventually sent off for further processing. Now we need to make the same system three more times for the remaining effigies. The resonant ender seems to be an interesting one because the only way to get bulk ender pills is with the philosopher's stone. Let me see what I can do. We have success, and I was right about the resonant ender being fiddly, but the crafter from RF Tools saved the day. With some persuasion anyway. But the reason that we needed all of these resources is because we need to make gunpowder. Lots of gunpowder. And we're going to be using this recipe at the bottom here. So let's pop down a pulverizer and send over our blaze rods. But now we have our very first sulfur, which is boostable. So we need a way to send our flint over here. And I'm thinking it's likely easiest to just use an ender chest. So let's stick one on top and then another one over where we're making flint. 
Moving on, let's take two storage drawers. One is going to be for sulfur and the other is the blaze powder. Dolly, I think we're going to need to find you a new home. You are the only one of your kind, so we must protect you at all costs. But now we can do the same for our blitz. And now we have a super not so simple system for making gunpowder. This is going to be painfully slow. So moving forward, I am hoping that we can find an experience bottle. That way we can make ourselves a boom shroom plant, which will actually grow into gunpowder. But for now, slow and painful it is. Next, we'll need to automate the creation of all four elemental charges, all of which require gunpowder, charcoal, and the main ingredient from our effigies. But before I speed off and do that, I want to mention that I've tried to generate some alternative power using a boiler and some alternators. It was exhausting making sterling dynamos, and this wall is absolutely ridiculous. And honestly, it's a pretty decent early game power source. This setup is generating 2000 RF per tick, which is definitely going to be enough for our thermal needs, but it's not going to help at all when it comes to mechanism. But enough of that, let me go and make our tier 3 monstrosity even worse. So we've got fire, lightning, earth and ice. The last thing that we're going to need to make our tier 3 essence is going to be some basic control circuits from mechanism. Thankfully it's not too terrible to make, we're just going to need a metallurgic infuser, some redstone and some osmium. And I'm actually not going to bother enriching this redstone for now, I just want to unlock refined storage. And now we just need to set up a very simple heated blaze burner. Something like this will do nicely. And for now, let's just manually drop in some ingredients. And now we have our very first tier 3 essence, and it is magnificent. Now let's make our crystal and ta-da! Quest complete. My beloved refined storage is now craftable. Yippee! But that also means yay, more freebies! And three chicken spawn eggs. <laughs> How unusual. So there's three things that I really want to conquer next. I want a simple yet powerful refined storage system. I want to speed through some industrial foregoing so I can make that bottle of enchanting, which is going to require us to get a mob crusher. But I also really want to tear everything that we've built so far down and make it back pretty and efficient. So I'm off to get myself a cup of tea and some chocolate and let's see what my brain can come up with. We're going to go from an island that looks like this to some village type housing that looks like this. Let me show you around. So we've got one house dedicated to refined storage and some microcrafting. We have an empty medium sized house ready for tier 2 and this long but thin house for tier 3. Now the plan was for me to actually get all of these machines moved into their building before hitting record but I have news to share. Number 1. We are incredibly low on power. Number 2. We have creative flight. More on that in a moment. And number 3. There's a very interesting item that we just unlocked and I really need to talk about it. So point one was power. I've had to disable all of our outside machines just so we have the power for our limited refined storage system and the basic processing that we've got inside. So what that means is before we can move the machines inside, we're going to need to invest in a power solution. The second point was we've managed to get creative flight from Project E using Swift Wolf's Rending Gale. And as long as we have some Project E fueled in our inventory, we can fly. And the way that you get your feathers is a chicken and egg solution. Then point three is one item that I really want to talk about. It is going to change the way that we automate everything forever. And that item is the transmutation interface. This incredible item allows refined storage to access everything that you have taught your transmutation table. It's fantastic. We can literally print items with refined storage using our EMC. As far as refined storage goes, I've got a few of the basic recipes saved so far, but this list is most certainly going to grow. But I guess we should talk about progression now. For tier 3, we have completed all of this section on the left. I hesitantly suppose we should probably tackle the right hand side now, which is going to mean that we need to start doing some mechanism. A very cool mod, but I've done it way too many times now and I, I kind of don't like it anymore. <laughs> it hurts my soul. Especially since we are legally obliged to make a fission reactor, which turns happy times into sad, oh no, why are they overheating? Wait, stop times but i guess we should just speed through this initial mechanism rip it off fast like a band-aid so with that done let's test out how powerful the almighty solar generator is mechanism can be very power hungry so it's got to be good 100 fe per tick now why is it so sad times i've got nine of these sad boys I think it's fair to say that mistakes were made. 
So it looks like it will be powered to the rescue with its 100,000 Fe per tick spirited reactor. I'll spare you guys the torture of waiting on energizing rods and I will see you when we're ready to build. <sighs> Let's get this done. Oop, wrong way. We now have our first of likely many power reactors, so let's export some redstone dust, some coal and some ice. We're also going to need to supply some water. So I hear you asking the question, you're wondering where we get ice from. I was wondering this for a while as well, until I met a wandering trader selling some packed ice. You then put said packed ice into a multi-servo press with an unpacking die and you get 9 regular ice. You then wash that 9 regular ice to get 9 packed ice. You then put that 9 packed ice into a multi servo press with an unpacking die and I think you get the picture, you get a lot of ice this way. Ice duplication for the win. So let's export some uraninite now to power this fella up and as always, auto mode goes on. And all we need to do is add our flux plug to the top, select our network and boom, power problems have been solved. This was not how I planned to spend my afternoon, but mechanism and power just kinda had to get started. But what that means now is we can for sure speed up our thermal machines, and yeah, I, I did go through industrial foregoing, we now have the boom shroom spores, but the phytogenic insulator is dreadfully slow without any upgrades, which is actually now an option for us because we can afford to power them. Even though we do have 7000 gunpowder at the moment, that's really not going to last that long. But now that we've done some work, I need to get working on moving all of our machines inside using refined storage instead of the EMC links. However, as always, there's one thing that needs doing first. This time, before we can truly start a large-scale automation, we need a way to generate a large quantity of resources. I think I've come up with a pretty simple but genius solution. So we're going to have a set of crushing wheels per resource, which we can then export our unprocessed blocks into. Then if we place down a 2x2 two two drawer, we can limit how many ores are actually crushed, depending on what upgrades we use. I've done a test and the exporter will actually stop exporting once the storage is full. We're also going to need to extract the cobblestone and the experience nuggets into their own drawer, that way the wheels can keep on turning. So we have converted this mess of pipes and machines for our tier 1 essence into essentially 3 machines. We have converted this janky mix up of sadness of tier 2 essence into this lovely compact wall of joy. And this nightmare rendition of pipes and despair has been condensed into a beautiful, clean and compact bundle of happiness. And we even have a new longhouse for every wheel of crushing I hope we're ever going to need. Now thinking ahead here, but for you guys it was in the past. In the intro, I'm going to say, or I have said, that the surprise was that it's a skyblock. So I'm going to need to do what I normally do and hide any hint of the void from our sightlines. Building up embankments and planting some fake forest to add some fake depth. And honestly, this actually makes me feel more relaxed, which is awesome. And if you're curious about what a fake forest looks like, it's this. It's a platform with very distant trees. It's so simple, but it makes a huge difference. But my friends, we have finally fully automated all of the crystals up to tier 3. The only improvements that we can add now are just going to be the speed upgrades. It's perfect. Next, we're going to need to tackle our tier 4 essence. And this is going to be our biggest challenge yet. That means that we're going to be forced to dig even deeper into mechanism, which is not going to be a blast. So for tier 4, we're going to need to make some inert tier 4 essence. For that, we're going to need a superheated blaze basin. So that means automating blaze cake production. Easy. What's not going to be easy is getting the fissile fuel pellets, because that's going to require a ton of machines from mechanism. We're also going to need to make some refined fuel, which I've not done for a while, so I'm actually kind of looking forward to that one. But first, we need to make some space in the garden for this janky sadness, so I'm actually going to remove all of our early game machines. So I'll see you on the other side. Let's go. And would you look at that, we have a nice big garden with lots of space for activities. So why don't we look at getting into making some refined fuel. We're going to start with a magma crucible, that's going to melt down our oil clumps into crude oil. We'll send that into a fractionating still to make light and heavy oil. That oil then goes into another fractionating still and that's going to make our refined fuel. We're going to have one still for heavy oil and one still for light oil. And for now we're just going to pump it into a fuel tank for later use. And as always there's byproducts so let's send them into a drawer with a void upgrade on. That's refined fuel sorted, super simple. And following that trend of simple let's go ahead and make a system for blaze cakes. 
All we need to do is compact some egg, sugar and cinder flour to make our bases. Like so, and then we just need to squirt some lava onto it to make our cake. Yummy! Sploosh, we are done. However, I think I'm going to change over to using a crafter instead of an exporter. That way we can just request the cakes instead of making an infinite amount. There, that's better. And now I think it's time to do the mechanism side of things. I'm just going to cry and speed through it the best that I can. I'll see you soon. Sometimes taking a break away from talking and just placing blocks can be just what the doctor ordered. I was able to concentrate enough to get a small mechanism reactor and a turbine up and running. And we're now making fissile fuel not only for our reactor, but also the fissile fuel pellets that we're going to need for the essence. And I've also come to the decision that this system is going to live outside. I am not moving this indoors. So we're just going to make the outdoor garden look kind of intentional and just pretty instead. Quick tip number three. For infinite fast water, get yourself a dynamic tank, set it to the empty mode and make yourself an Evertide amulet from Project E. It's very cheap and it's instant infinite water. But let's find ourselves a nice empty building, pop down a blaze bin, a basin, a mixer on top, a temporary shaft, a deployer, a shaft, a cog and a cog, an exporter on the deployer set to blaze cakes, an exporter on the basin for the other ingredients, add in our electric motor and connect it to power, and blazy boy is now a blue blazy boy. Nice! Now I kind of need to stop selling my tier 3 essence, that way we've got it available for crafting. But it seems that auto crafting is broken, so let me do some troubleshooting and I'll see if I can get things up and running again. Yay, we've got Mixy Mixy, and ta-da, we have got our very first inert tier 4 essence. Next, we're going to need to encapsulate this with some refined fuel, and if we throw in some inert essence, we should see that it is incredibly slow. Like, like I, I feel like this is going to take like two weeks per essence kind of speed slow. This could be a big problem. But many years later, we now have our very first tier 4 mechanical essence. And now, we have the crystal too. That's a nice colour. We can finally unlock the final chapter, the end game. We're going to be given some Essence of Darkness, which we're going to need to start Plutonium, Polonium and Supercritical Phase Shifting. All words that nobody wants to hear. But for now, 9 out of 10 doctors recommend a break after working through any mechanism. So I'm going to go remind myself what clouds look like and I'll see you soon. Okay, I'm back and I actually got rain in my eyes and it was actually magnificent. But now we need to go to the nether because I need to make a ghast cry. So I've made myself some armour and I've stocked up on some flying fuel. Oh! And I've also made a bigger turbine because SBS is going to need a lot of power. And sadly, I might need a bigger reactor too. But nether, here we come. So it's a skyblock nether and of course we spawned right next to a fortress which seems to have a billion blazes all angry at us. Meanies. We are here because we need a ghast. So I'm going to fly around the fortress for a bit until one spawns. Okay, so I'm guessing the ghasts don't spawn in fortresses, so I'm going to try something else. If we take our building gadget, we should be able to quickly platform away from the fortress's borders, hopefully allowing ghasts to spawn. Um, that's almost right, game. However, we need a ghast with an A, not a ghost with an O. Oh my goodness, baby skeletons, what kind of cursed evil place is this? And after an unspecified time period has passed, we now have two ghasts. Please cry for us. Thank you, you glorious nether octopus. We can now craft ourselves a stasis chamber, which is going to let us farm wither farts for advanced crafting. We just need to make up some wither skulls, which is going to be as easy as skeleton skulls in a metallurgic infuser with the essence of darkness. And skelly skulls are just micro crafting, which refined storage excels at. So with some skulls in hand, let's make ourselves a fart farm using industrial foregoing fluid lasers. Here goes nothing. If it doesn't work, it's right next to our nuclear reactor, so I guess I'll become a superhero when I get irradiated. Kinda cool. Success. Albeit kinda slow, so let's throw in some add-ons to make it super quick. And let's teach the system how to make some supreme machine frames. Oh, and inside looks a little bit different. I've removed our phytogenic insulators making slime and gunpowder, and we now have a system in place to actually generate a bunch of obsidian. And if we head down the road just a little bit and make a right... At the end, we'll see that I spent far too long working on texturing the floor, but we've got a very nice and basic greenhouse, hopefully making all of the gunpowder we are ever going to need. And we're also growing potatoes because we are going to need biofuel at some point, and potatoes are just easy. And I also spent some more time blocking off the sight lines to help fully forget that we are on a sky block. And I really like this door here. It really looks kind of ominous. And to save on blaze cakes, we now only light our burner when there's actually items inside of our basin. Now let's see, can we request a supreme machine frame? 
We can, and it's here. We are doing all of this so we can make ourselves a Wither Builder. But first, we must actually kill a Wither. And there is no way that I'm actually fighting a Wither, so I'm hoping I can just cheese it with a Mob Crusher. So let's kind of build a little bit away from our base area and set something up. I really hope this works. Let's disable Generating Essence and let's build a Wither. No, 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 it didn't work. Help, help, help. Don't kill my reactor. Oh my goodness, that could have been so bad. But we now have our Nether Star, so we can make our Wither Builder and automate killing the Wither. However, what scares me is I cannot actually find any Wither Proof blocks in this mod pack. So let's try it without any blocks and see if the Crusher can kill it before it shoots. Oh, bother. It killed our Wither Builder. So after doing some research, I'm hoping that this hardened glass from Thermal is going to be witherproof. And yes, our builder survived. Now we just need to hook this up to auto-export soul sand and skulls, set up a timer and boom, we have automatic nether stars. Nice! And not too long later, we have a bunch of nether stars. While that was working, I set up the schematic cannon to make us the precision mechanism maker from Hobble Creates, as we are going to need a ton of them to progress. 5,000 of them. And so far we are up to 684. Do you, do you hear that? It's, it's the sound of impending doom. It's time for some more mechanism. This time we're going to be working along the black iron ingot chain to eventually reach antimatter. Thankfully the black iron ingots are easy, it's just iron and dark essence. The less fun part starts when we need to make HTPE sheets and all of the SPS stuff. And after many, many hours of AFK, let's see if I can remember how to do this. I do! But I thought tier 4 essence was going to be slow. This is going for the world record of being a grind. Oh boy was I right about the grind. It's not so much the SPS that's slow, it's our production of nuclear waste and subsequently our polonium that's slow. We need 1,000 millibuckets of polonium to make 1 millibucket of antimatter, and we need 1,000 millibuckets of antimatter to make 1 antimatter pellet. We have 2 pellets so far, and we need 6 in total so we can make our creative chemical tank for infinite antimatter. And this is the speed at which we make 1 antimatter. And the only reason that we are going this quick is I've had a lot of time to chill and upgrade things. We have a much, much larger fission reactor now with a ginormous water tank, so we can safely burn 65 millibuckets of fissile fuel every single tick. We now also have a maximum size turbine generating, I think, 5 million FE per tick. This system is just absolutely ridiculous, and I think for the next mod pack, I just want no technology. I'll just become a run of the mill farmer or something. <laughs> but let's at least complete the quest. And do you remember what I said earlier? This so-called expert pack is going to be easy for sure. Yeah, whoopsies. But now we are only two items away from being able to automate our final star shards. I think we're going to need around 5,000 nitro crystals, and I believe that we're going to need 24 ultimate singularities, but it could likely be a lot more. And typical hobble avoiding energizing rods, let's work on the singularities first. We're going to need an ultimate crafting table, and we're going to need 1,000 of each automated resource to make individual singularities, which we can then combine into an ultimate one. But real quick, let me show off how compact our HTPE system is. We're up to 8,000 of these things now, and honestly, it could be more if I just throw in some more draw upgrades. And I ran into a problem where we're not actually selling any of our crystals right now, and I started selling off all of our lower tier crystals. But there we go, I believe that's every pattern needed for the ultimate crafting table. Let's put in a request. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder why the craft failed. So it turns out we need 500 millibuckets of energized glowstone to make luminescence. But when you teach that pattern to refine storage, it says to send over 625 millibuckets. What a strange bug. But there we go, fixing that, luminescence is now finally being made. And we now have our quantum compressor and an ultimate crafting table. Into here, we are going to need to pump in 24,000 of every ingot, and also a few miscellaneous items like diamonds. And to prevent overcrafting, we're actually going to be using a detector. This will count how many of each singularity we have, and disable the exporter when we have 24. But it also helps if you remember to put in your ultimate catalyst. Silly me. And now we wait. Again. 
Oh sure, fine, while we wait, why don't we set up some quick energizing rod automation? We need a crafter facing into our orb, comparator out of the side, into a redstone link, which is linked to one on the crafter. Set the crafter to redstone locks crafting, and that's basically it. We just need to put in a pattern for nitro crystals, and don't forget to whitelist the nitro crystals, and then make a fully separate system for the blazing crystals. And that's a successful test. Nice! And before we cut, why don't we see if we've got our third antimatter yet? No. Alright, so I guess it's back to waiting for me, diddly dee. I am now 100 years old. We hit 2000 subscribers, but we have finished making 24 of each singularity. Let's combine these all together to get our ultimate singularities. And we're now at a place in our life where we can start working on automating the final star shard. It's going to need some epic sequence assembly, but I think it's going to look really cool when it's in action. Oh, bother. I forgot about refined radiance. Oh, and surprise, surprise, it's more mechanical mixers with even more superheating. Two lots by the looks of it. Yay. I guess it makes sense to just add two more mixing systems to our previous superheater. Maybe now we're ready to start building a system to sequentially assemble our final star shards. Which looks like this until you actually read the instructions and see that each star needs to be stamped 20 times in order to make a star shard. And after adding a return belt, we should hopefully be ready to throw on another star. And what we should see is every deployer stamped down on it, it'll enter onto the return belt, but it won't enter the draw because I filtered it to only accept the shard. And yes, it's going round for a second stamping. Nice! Although it really does help if you plug in the system that actually makes you refine radiance. Whoopsies! But yes, now it's working. It's amazing what happens when things are plugged in. And we have our first of many final star shards. Yippee! But currently, we only need two star shards in order to make our creative chemical tank. We're just still waiting on our antimatter. We've got five so far, and we're still processing the polonium, which is exciting because honestly, I'm surprised nothing has exploded yet. So while we wait for the last antimatter, I'm going to have a think about how we're going to automate the star shards so only one gets processed at a time. So I settled on using a timer set to 1800 ticks, that's around 90 seconds which is going to be how long one shard takes to assemble. A pro tip here is to use a pulse extender from create to make sure it actually activates your exporter as the timer only sends out a one tick pulse. And it's at this point in the series where I face palm the hardest. We have been waiting days for antimatter to generate, but when you get your first antimatter, you get two antimatter as a reward. That means that we now have seven and can continue the mod pack. So let's craft ourselves a creative chemical tank, grab ourselves a gauge dropper, pick up some antimatter liquid and drop it into our tank. Infinite antimatter. This has been one heck of a grind, but it finally happened for us and we should be so proud. And so I've moved our chemical crystallizer inside and yeah, we are producing antimatter like it's cobblestone. Over to my right, you'll see that I've installed a new feature wall. That's because to make our final star, we're going to need to do some big boy crafts. We're going to need to export all of these items into the back of the crafters in the correct order, and we should be good to go. Like so. Then if we throw this pattern into this crafter, the feature wall should come to life. It's done. Now we're going to be waiting for the rest for quite a while because the shards are going to be our bottleneck. But here we go. Final star quest complete. Quick tip number four. The electric motor struggles with stress when powering crafters, but if you use a speed controller, you can actually trick it into working anyway. So where do we go from here? Well, we have many creative items that we need to craft, with the end game goal of the creative vending upgrade, which will give infinite items to any storage drawer. We're going to need four final stars, four final power flowers, each of which require three stars, and each creative item. Which, now that I say out loud, I'm for sure going to need a lot more ultimate singularities. But I am so excited that we are this close to being done. The last few days of AFK have made me question if I'd ever finish this video. I'm sorry that this video is so late. It's a silly idea to do it in one video, but I kind of got inspired to try something new. Who's ready to do some creative crafting? I have been waiting for this for quite some time. I think we might just be there. We have 32 final stars. I did make some extra to err on the side of caution and I've actually taught the system how to make a bunch of the creative items. And in this barrel, we've got a fully charged energy cube, which does need to be charged via wireless charging. Do not place it down in the world. And we've got a maximum size storage disc. First up, the creative motor. Quest complete. Next, the creative fluid tank. Quest complete. Creative storage disc. Quest complete. 
and a creative energy cube. Quest complete. We still have 23 stars, but we are going to need three more sets of the creative items, so I'm not going to count my chickens just yet. But I've got a plan. If we make the first final power flower and we place it down in the world, we are now generating 47 trillion EMC per second. So we can very easily just buy more final stars for 100 billion EMC each. And not too long later, we are ready to craft up the final remaining power flowers. That's one, that's two, and that's a three. We just need to pick up number four. And my friends, please put your hands together for the creative vending upgrade. But we're going to need to be very careful with this. First, we need to place down a drawer, a hopper going into the back of it, and our upgrade into the hopper. We can then lock this drawer, remove the upgrade, and apply it to this drawer. We now have unlimited creative vending upgrades. So that means that now we've got infinite coal, infinite lumium, infinite everything. However, sad times indeed. After applying upgrades to all of our drawers and then trying to craft something, I was introduced to a game-breaking bug. For some horrible reason, refined storage can't seem to access any of the drawers that have unlimited items in. I've never encountered this bug before, I kind of have no idea how I'm supposed to fix this because you can't take out the upgrades. What I can do though is disconnect the drawers from the system and then just manually store a ton of each item on our storage disk. That means that then we can do some of our final crafting and actually complete this mod pack. So let's check the quest book. Chapter 1 is fully complete and for chapter 2 we are just missing a die mixer. Nice. For chapter 3 we need to hold an advanced universal cable, a accumulator, a click machine and some iron spikes. Yay! And for chapter 4 we're going to need to make a localized time destabilizer. That's going to need some ether gas and some micro crafting. Chapter 4 complete! And for chapter 5 we are missing 3 optional items, the creative blaze cake, the creative EMC link and a creative flux augment. Let's do the augment first, we can deploy a destabilizer onto a final star and then squirt that with ether gas and then repeat it a few times and we get our augment. For the EMC link I need to teach the system how to make all of the different tiers of matters and there we go, final EMC link complete. And I just want to say for the record, Project E, all of these different colour EMC links are just totally overkill. But for the creative blaze cake, we can modify our star shard system to squeer and stamp onto a star 100 times. The purple forbidden cake is done. Now let's just see if we can catch it. My friends, my wonderful important friends, we have completed Mechanical Mastery 100%. What a wild ride this was. We can now call ourselves experts at automation. And if we check the quest log, that you will see that every chapter is green, meaning that full completion has been attained. Outstanding effort. So I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for sticking around and watching this insane single episode idea. Let me know in the comments what you thought about it, subscribe if you're new or old, and as always, leave a like if you like to automate. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.